Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to go through the unboxing and setup of the new Elipal X Card Cold Wallet. Now it bills itself as the first air gapped card wallet. It's a bit of a misnomer because in its day to day operations, it uses NFC. And that's actually a good thing because it makes it a lot easier than most air gapped wallets, which require scanning QR codes back and forth. However, in its setup process, it is completely air gapped. It has a separate device that is used to initialize the card. This separate device, I'll show you when we unbox it, allows us to generate our seed phrase randomly and generate our backup completely unconnected from everything. No cables, no internet, no Bluetooth, no NFC, nothing like that during the setup, which is the most important part for a secure seed phrase and private key. So let me unbox this and show you how it works. The good people at Elipal were also generous enough to throw in a few extra cards for this demo. So I'll show you how to create duplicates onto additional cards if you want to have convenient backups ready to go. Of course, because it uses a seed phrase, you've always got that seed phrase as your backup. So if you lose all your cards, you can always order another one and just generate a new one using your setup device. So uh, the setup is very easy and quick, so let's jump in. All right, so nice packaging. Uh, this is their seventh anniversary. Now, not only is the setup completely air gap, but the card itself employs a, an EAL6 secure element chip for uh, increased security. So we've got some cool stickers here. We've got a nice little leather carrying case for the card. Uh, here's that card, and we've got some instructions, a quick start guide, some overview and a sheet for your seed phrase. Uh, comes with a little charging cable. Now the, the device does need to be charged, so um, it does have a USB connector so you can charge it up. I have a little charging brick, um, so I'll go ahead and charge this up with my cable. So it just lets me know it's charging. And that's it, really. Um, it's just the uh, card and the setup device. So uh, I've got a few extra backup cards. Now as I mentioned we've got this backup phrase um, and use uh, we can make as many copies of that as we want to and we can use the backup phrase to create as many card backups as we want to. Um, but uh, the restore process is time consuming so having a backup card ready and waiting if you lose your card um, makes life a lot more convenient when it comes to that. Also, the cards are pin protected, so if someone were to find your card, uh, they wouldn't have access to your crypto uh, unless they had your pin. And you can create up to 16 digit pins if you want. So that uh, adds to some security. But you also have to remember that complexity is the enemy of security in many ways. So I wouldn't recommend a 16 digit pin. It's just gonna make it very inconvenient to use and uh, difficult to remember. So four to eight digits is sufficient. In my book, you can go full tilt if you want. All right, so I'm just gonna power this up. I have three choices here, uh, create wallet, recover wallet, or options. Uh, in the options, you've got the uh, ability to enable a passphrase. This is an additional word on top of your backup phrase. Um, I don't recommend this for newcomers. If you forget this, you've lost all of your crypto and uh, there's nobody to call. So uh, only for advanced users. I'll go ahead and create a wallet and it wants me to insert the card. Uh, this is the secure element chip. All right, and we can choose the number of words in our seed phrase. I like to use 12. A 12 word seed phrase is more than sufficient for backing up uh, a cold wallet. And then uh, I need to set a pin for the card. I'll go ahead and do that. All right, and then after you've chosen the pin, it wants you to confirm it. Uh, choosing the pin is pretty easy with these arrows um, and very straightforward. 
Um, and you can see the pins, so uh, there won't be any mistakes. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of uh, pin entry hides the pin, but you're generally alone when you're doing this, and it's much clearer to the end user when they can see the numbers and that they've been entered correctly. Uh, so I'll go ahead and set up, uh, I'll go ahead and confirm my pin here. All right, and now it's generating that seed phrase. All right, so uh, the wallet was created. And now it's asking me if I want to use a duplicate card. So uh, I'll say yes. I'll get one of these cards ready. So I'll say yes, and I'll take this one out. And I'll put this other one in. It's just that easy. And then we'll click OK. I'll use the same pin. You can have a new pin or a different pin if you want to. Uh, but I'm just going to keep the same pin. As I mentioned, complexity is the enemy of security in many ways. So if you've got multiple pins on multiple cards, um, you're going to have to keep them straight and it's going to be frustrating. Sometimes keeping it simple is the best security. All right, we're done with that. That was really easy. Um, I'm not going to use uh, another duplicate card. Uh, let's see, we'll hit next telling us the importance of the seed phrase. Uh, this is our only chance to back up, so we want to be very careful when we do this. All right, there's six of the words, so I'll write those down, and then uh, you can uh, advance to the next six, and then you're done. So I'll go ahead and write these down on my sheet. All right, and then after you've got your words written down, you're gonna, it's going to ask you to confirm all of those. You can use this arrow to go up and down, refer to your sheet, and just choose the word that you have written down in slot number one. Oh, and then uh, now they're asking me for slot number six and slot number 12. All right, now it's uh, ready to, for me to take out the card, and I've created two cards. That's great. All right, and uh, so we're done with this setup. As you saw, I created uh, two cards during the setup process. This is the only time that you'll be able to duplicate a card so easily. So if you want to have more than one card backup, I would suggest buying them at the same time as your main card. If you buy your uh, separate cards after you've got the process done, you'll have to do the 12-word restore to set up that other backup card. You'll always be able to create new cards. It'll just be a little more tedious using the 12 words. All right, so I'm done with this device now. Um, and if the cable made you nervous, uh, as far as the air gap goes, it's from a charging brick. It's not plugged into my computer. But if, you're, uh, if you want to be pure to the air gap uh, philosophy, then perhaps you would just let yours charge up fully before going through the process. But I was just using this as a charging cable. All right, now the next thing to do is download the Elipol app. You can do that at the App Store, and there it is right there. I already have it installed on my phone, uh, but we're creating a brand new wallet here based on this card, so we'll just go up here to Wallets, and then down at the bottom they've got Add Hot Wallet or Connect to Cold Wallet. So I'm going to connect to Cold Wallet, and then I'll choose the X card. And then uh, I've got the card here. We'll, we'll connect the card. And I have to enter the card PIN. That's the security here. And then we'll scan the card by holding it to the back of the phone. Everything good. All right, and then now we just enable the cryptocurrencies that we want to manage. Bitcoin is always a default. Uh, Ethereum is on there. I'll hit Sol. And uh, that's it for me, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Sol. There are quite a few others that you can enable if you want to. I'll hit Complete here. Now, um, I believe that I have the um, option of renaming this if I want. Yeah, and that's it. The setup was really quick and easy. So uh, I will show you how to fund this wallet. Uh, basically, you just need to transfer some crypto in, so um, I'm going to make it easy. I'm just going to use another phone-based app, so we'll just tap here to get the uh, Bitcoin address. We'll tap Receive. We've got this QR code if we're scanning from a different device, but I'm doing this on my phone, so I'm just going to tap that. 
uh, address and then I'll go over to a different app here. We'll go over to Coinbase and I've got some Bitcoin in my Coinbase account so I'll just go over here to the portfolio tap on my Bitcoin account and then I'll just do a transfer and send over to my Elipal there it is and then I'll confirm that and then I'll be using the Bitcoin network here and I'll just send the max. If you've got a lot of Bitcoin, please do small test transactions. This is just a small test amount I'm going to send over to my wallet. I'll hit send now. And then I'm done. So uh, now that I've sent that out, it's pending. It might take a while before it actually hits the wallet. Uh, when it does hit the wallet, it might not... Uh, confirm on the blockchain right away it might be a while before you actually see the balance uh, and it's spendable but just be patient all right and so you can see that the bitcoin has arrived in the wallet so uh, that's it i showed you how to set it up i showed you how to fund it and no tutorial would be complete unless i showed you how to send crypto back out of the wallet so um, I'm going to do that for you as well. So we'll just go into the account and then down here we're going to click send. Now you can send this anywhere. You can send it to anyone, uh, a friend, a family, anyone that has a Bitcoin address. Or you can send it to a different wallet that you may own. Or you can send it to an exchange if you want to liquidate and cash out. So I'm just going to send it right back where I got it from to Coinbase. So we'll just go over to my Coinbase app. And this time uh, when I hit transfer, I want to receive crypto. So I'll hit receive crypto. I'll tell them that I want to uh, receive Bitcoin. And then I'll just copy that into my clipboard. We'll go back to our Ella Paul wallet. Uh, we'll just tap and paste. We're going to allow that paste. And there we go. That's really all there is to it. The address is the most important thing. Now for the amount, I'll just hit max. I'll send the same, I'll just send that Bitcoin right back where I got it from. Now remember, you do have blockchain fees when you use your wallet. This is not Elipal charging you. This is the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, that's how Bitcoin works. So get your card ready. We'll hit done and then we'll hit submit. And it's going to ask us to bring the card up. It's going to give us an overview of the transfer and the blockchain fees. And then uh, we'll click Next. And we need to enter the PIN card for security. This is where if you had a 16-digit PIN, uh, things would be pretty inconvenient. So uh, choose a PIN that's right for you. I'll hit Submit here. Then it wants the card. Oops. Off it goes. And we're done. So it's going to take it a little bit before that Bitcoin goes out of the wallet, uh, but it is pending. Oh, if you just tap here, you can see the list of transactions. So I have uh, one Bitcoin transaction coming in and one going out, and we're done. So that's it, the Elipal X card. Very easy to set up and use, and you get a lot of security bang for your buck. If you have any questions about anything I said, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.